Our next call comes to us from Walton, New York, Independent Line, with Congressman Dennis Kucinich of Ohio. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Um, I have no problem with the charges against Bush. I, I, I don't think there's anything I disagree with. What, what I'd really like to hear is, is where do you, where do you think his motivation was if he was so wrong? In other words, you know, what, what, is there a money trail here? Where, where does it take his, his his actions have to lead us someplace well, that? Uh, that, that, that he got his motivation. Well, you know, one of the things that I'd be interested in, and it's not uh, has really nothing to do with my testimony today, is why you know why the implications of Congress not really being able to crack the veil of secrecy that was put over the meetings that Dick Cheney had with the oil companies, uh, you know, right at the beginning of the of, of their administration, because there were maps we're told there were maps of Iraq that were spread on the table, and that. Uh, there, there was essentially a consensus that access to that oil was going to be critical, uh, and I want to. What I'd be interested in is the link between that meeting and uh, military action later on. I think you know there, there are many unanswered questions, but if you just take what's on the record, and that's what I'm going to do today, you can make a case that uh, that impeachable offenses have been committed. And again, I look to the consequences of this. This isn't the consequences have been quite severe. We've moved our country in a, in a direction of increased militarism, that we've built up military budgets at the expense of a domestic budget, uh, uh, money for health care, for education, for job creation, for environmental protection, all these things that are so critically needed for alternative energy development. Money's, you know, money's not there that we need because more money's being put into this war, more money's being put into a military buildup. Unless we find the truth, we're never going to be free of the, of the implications of this uh, illegal, unprovoked, unwarranted attack against Iraq. What is your assessment of Vice President Dick Cheney? Well, that he, I, I introduced a resolution uh, early, early on, well, uh, over a year ago, uh, Resolution 333, that Mr. Cheney should uh, face an impeachment for his role because he made many statements that were, were uh, uh, very definite statements about uh, Iraq's uh, nuclear weapon capabilities. And he, had, he has to be held accountable. As a matter of fact, I thought that, it, that in its constitutional direction, it would be preferable to, uh, to have uh, him subject to that action and then uh, with the appropriate consequences, uh, then creating a vacancy in the office of vice president so that there would be uh, a, truly a new administration on the way. And again, th this is about accountability not only to this moment and to the American people, but to history. Our Constitution is at risk here. If we move in a direction where a president is no longer accountable, even for, for an aggressive war, uh, then we have set the stage for more wars, for war against Iran, and for uh, changing the nature of American governance to uh, just a, a, a government who's, which is about empire and not about taking care of the problems that people have right here at home, which are urgent housing, education, health care, uh, job creation. That's what, our, that's what America ought to be about. Not about aggressive war. New York City. Good morning on the Republican line. Yes, good morning. Um, Congressman uh, Kucinich. Um, I'm an attorney, a former prosecutor, and I was a special agent with the U.S. Customs Services, JFK, in 1999. Um, I blew the whistle about uh, airport security back then, about um, how illegal aliens and uh, people with felony backgrounds were working for the airlines. Um, how easy it would be to p place a bomb on a plane, things of that sort. Um, I ended up making a very big arrest for uh, drug smuggling that involved uh, couriers being assisted by airline employees as well as customs and immigration mm -hmm. officials. Uh, getting, they were bypassing. Uh, I'm sorry, they were bypassing uh, the the checks, and uh, they were being smuggled out into. Um, the outside, and I reported all this, and uh, I was threatened um, to keep my mouth shut. And Thre threatened I, by whom? I was threatened by my supervisors. They're called the, the SAC, the special agent in charge, mm -hmm. deputy special agent in charge. And I was threatened to keep my mouth shut, and um, they wanted me to perjure uh, testimony in front of the grand jury, as well as um, change all the information that I had in my file. Bottom line is, is I didn't do it. I was terminated, and uh, I ended up filing a lawsuit against the government, which has been going on now for about nine and a half years. 
I'm going to have to stop you on that note because we're short on time. Well, I, you know, I'd be interested if the person would call my office to pursue this discussion further. Uh, as the chairman of the Domestic Policy Subcommittee, I typically hear from people who at one time or another served the federal government and they were told not to do a duty that they had sworn to do, and it resulted in uh, adverse effects to the American people. And I appreciate that you were willing to stand up and blow the whistle. Uh, you know, I just want to say one thing before we wrap this up. When you consider that at this very moment this administration is, is getting ready uh, to attack Iran and, and that would plunge us into a forefront war in, uh, uh, in, in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and, uh, and, and Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. Uh, we, we, are, we are looking at a situation that's very dangerous for America. It's dangerous for our troops who are out in the field. It's dangerous for our economic ability. We cannot continue to sustain this kind of conduct. We, we have to look to the Constitution and to, our, and to our history to try to rein in this abuse of power so that, so that we can focus again on what's important in America. We have a right to protect our country. But, but Iraq didn't have anything to do with 9-11. And so there has to be consequences for this president's uh, insistence that Congress pass the authorization for the use of military force, which has visited calamity on, on the people of Iraq and the, and the people of this country and the world. Final question. Could we see a change to the 1973 War Powers Act? Well, you know, the change that's being uh, uh, advocated is, is actually to take even more power away from Congress. The, con the, the framers were very clear on this. They, they didn't want uh, the new government uh, that was created uh, after the Declaration of Independence to be a return to uh, the po uh, a power of a king who could wage war willy-nilly. They wanted to put the power of war making in, in the legislator and not the in legislative and not the executive branch. Uh, we need to strengthen Congress's hold in that area, not not diminish it. And and the and the uh, so-called reforms that are being offered would further erode uh, Congress's uh, constitutionally based authority of the war power. This is, a, this is a very serious matter. We see the consequences with respect to what's happened in Iraq. Congressman Dennis Kucinich of Ohio testifying later this morning before the House Judiciary Committee. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Come back again.